principle of auto-rotation was all important here. The main rotor is made to spin in the main by the aerodynamic forces of the airflow alone. The rotor on top of the aeroplane is simply windmilling. However, another great autogyro pioneer, the late much-missed wing commander Ken Wallace, introduced a little system to spin up the main rotor that we see here being demonstrated on the Rotorsport Calidus autogyro that we're about to see. This to help give the machine an even shorter takeoff than its engine can achieve alone. And that we're about to see very impressively demonstrated by a display that gets in very close to us. Here goes the Calidus in the hands of Peter Troy Davies. You can see the rotor incidence also uh, changed there during the spin-up process, known by a less than technical term as a seesaw rotor. And of course, one of the main advantages of the auto gyro over the helicopter is basically its simplicity. It's also a much lower cost proposition than a helicopter and has lighter weight. And that means that this little machine has a very good power to weight ratio, ratio in spite of the fact that the Rotax 914 engine pushes out just 150 horsepower. There's also a significant uh, safety consideration here, which is that in an event of an engine failure, the auto gyro can simply auto rotate down to land and they can land in some very, very small spaces indeed. You could land one of these in a roll of less than three meters. If you've got a back garden long enough, eminently practical. And also very maneuverable. And Peter likes to demonstrate this. He has a dispensation from the Civil Aviation Authority to come in a bit closer with his small and light machine. And we get a very good view of him performing his gyrations throughout this display, supported by his sponsor Air Total, and by a new sponsor this year, the headset manufacturer Bose. Turning on the proverbial sixpence, cavorting around in front of us. What fun it looks, this Rotorsport Calidus. A tandem two-seater, designed in Germany, and it is a fun flying machine, but it's also a practical touring aircraft. Adjustable seats, a cabin heater, a good amount of space in the cockpit. You can really go places in one of these. No wonder more than a thousand of them have been sold around the world. And Peter Troy Davies has displayed them around the world as well. He is based up near Blackpool, but he transits right around the UK. And obviously, without flying to and from the venue, he's also displayed at the huge EAA Air Venture Show at Oshkosh in Wisconsin in the USA. Adding to its affordability, the Calidus with the Rotax engine runs on normal motor fuel. Going his way enthusiastically down the crowd line. It's been great to see Peter making a name for himself on the show circuit in the last few years. It does recall something of the spirit of Ken Wallace with his Wallace Auto Gyros. They were much more vestigial machines than this one with its cabin. Ken preferred to sit out in the open, exposed to the elements. Most famously, of course, one of his Auto Gyros was used in the making of the James Bond film, You Only Live Twice, which was filmed 50 years ago this year, remarkably. Peter's been flying for nearly 35 years, and he's got almost 25 years experience now on auto gyros. He's been displaying them for a very long time as well. More than two and a half thousand hours to his credit on this type of flying machine, but he also flies more conventional aeroplanes. 
Indeed, he was one of the winners of the 1994 Around the World Air Race, flying a rather different machine, a twin turboprop Cessna Conquest executive aircraft. He's been active in the past in the World Microlight Championships as well, but now by far best known for his auto gyro antics. as he passes by, one fluorescent green hand, one fluorescent orange, you can't miss him. played a role during the Battle of Britain period operating from Duxford when they were used in a very different form to this, namely the Avro rotor, a development of Juan de la Fierra's early C-30 design as radar calibration aircraft, helping calibrate the vital new air defence radars that were so important to the RAF's success during the Battle of Britain. What a contrast to the small, lightweight Calidus towards the end then of his sequence now with some more close-in manoeuvring around crowd centre And so, coming in to take his final bow, do show your appreciation to Peter Troy Davies on the Rotorsport Calidus Autogyro. Thank you very much, thanks to Peter. And with that, for the next display item, it's my pleasure to hand you over to Captain Dave Steer of the Army Air Corps. Thank you very much, Ben. Sirs, bombs, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good afternoon. On behalf of the attack helicopter display team, I'd like to welcome you to a very sunny Sunday afternoon display of the British Army Apache. My name is Captain Dave Steer, and I'll be talking you through today's show. The team is made up of operational frontline crews from the attack helicopter force, based not far from Duxford in Wattisham, Suffolk. All team members serve on frontline squadrons and hold a state of readiness should they